the Department of Justice Electromagnetic Weapons Program. The Department of Defense uses the Department of Justice to develop and test non-lethal weapons as an aspect of deniability because many of these applications violate existing treaties. By using the Department of Justice and classifying these programs as crowd control, they are able to avoid scrutiny and can violate the spirit of the law without technically being in violation of international treaties. In 1993, the National Institute of Justice Initiative on Less Than Lethal Weapons recommended that state and local police departments in America utilize psychotronic, electromagnetic, and other mind control weapons against American citizens involved in, quote, domestic disturbances, an open-ended term that could include family arguments. The report said, quote, short-term research will be completed to adopt a military technology to use by domestic law enforcement, including laser microwave and electromagnetic weapons, unquote. The Washington Post reported, quote, the Pentagon and the DOJ have agreed to share state-of-the-art military technology with civilian law enforcement agencies, including exotic non-lethal weapons, unquote. This new approach to law enforcement was showcased in a three-day secret conference on non-lethal weaponry at the Applied Physics Laboratory at John Hopkins University in Maryland. The conference head was Colonel John B. Alexander, Program Manager for Non-Lethal Psychotronic Defense, Los Alamos National Laboratory. Attending the meeting was Attorney General Janet Reno, military weapons specialists, and representatives from state and local police departments. Subjects included radio frequency weapons, high-powered microwave technology, acoustic technology, voice synthesis, and application of extreme frequency electromagnetic fields to non-lethal weapons. Question about some of the technology that you're developing to fight the war on terror, specifically directed energy and high-powered microwave technology. Do you, uh, when do you envision that you can weaponize that type of technology? Mm -hmm. Goodness, um, it is. It is in, for the most part, the kinds of things you're talking about are in varying early stages. Do you want to? Do you have anything you'd add? I don't think I would add much. I. Mm -hmm. I if, I think they are in early stages and, and, and probably not ready uh, for employment at this point. But you sound like you're willing to experiment with it. I, I think that's the point. And I think and it's, we, we have, I think, from the beginning of this conflict, I think General Franks has been very open to looking at uh, new things if there are new things available and has been, been willing to, to put them into the fight even before they've been fully wrung out. And I think that's uh, not referring to these two particular cases of directed energy or, or high-powered microwave. Uh, but. Just the head uh, was burned, and uh, uh, other, the other parts of the, the bodies wasn't anything that happened on, on it. Al Ghazali reported that he had seen three passengers in a car, all dead, with their faces and teeth burnt, the body intact, and no sign of projectiles. Uh, there wasn't any, any bullet. I saw they, they teeth, just they teeth, and um, no eyes. Uh, all of them, with the body, nothing for the bodies, just the teeth and, and uh, all the, uh, I mean, uh, the heads uh, were uh, burned. There were other inexplicable aspects. The terrain where the battle took place was dug up by the American military and replaced with other fresh earth. The bodies that were not hit by projectiles had shrunk to just slightly more than one meter in height. Uh, except that uh, the bodies is uh, scaled by the bullets. Most of them that uh, become very small. Uh, I mean, uh, it's like, like that, something like that. talk with the colleague Dr. Saad El Faluji, which is the chief surgeon in that hospital. Dr. El Faluji said to me that from the survivors that he operated, that they said they did not hear any noise. 
So there was no explosion to hear, no metal fragments or shrapnels or bullets in the bodies. So they themselves were thinking of some strange kinds of weapon which they did not know. No gunshot wounds. No, no. It, it, I think I don't know what it was really. We couldn't. We are here ten uh, surgeons. We couldn't decide what was the weapon which been uh, hit this car. But inside the bodies, you did not discover ordinary bullets. All of them being, all we didn't find bullets. Yeah. We didn't find bullets. But most of the uh, passenger people been dead, so they took them immediately to the uh, refrigerator. We couldn't decide to see, but those those who are alive, we couldn't find any kind of uh, shells. We didn't find shells inside their body. Outside, it seems to be a new, a new weapon. It seems, it seems a new weapon. They try to do experiments on our, on our civilian. We don't know what was. Uh, Nobody can identify what the time of this one. 26 in the past. About 20 of them. Some of them have no head. The head been cut. Some of them, the arms, the legs. The only one who didn't injure was the driver. And really, I don't know how he reached our hospital. Because one hand, one arm was in his lap. One head beside him. It was a very, very strange, horrible, horrible, horrible thing. In the roof of the car, there was part brain, of the body, quantum intestine, brains. Yes, all so parts of the body. It was a miserable, it was very, 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 very I miserable. I told them before. Do you have idea with what kind of weapons they attacked that bus? This the bus, we didn't know what kind of uh, weapon would be uh, hit. Really, what we saw, cut arms, cut legs, cut head, abdomen, open abdomen.